either team. And Cohen today claiming the president inflated his net worth by $4 billion. This linked to financial documents Trump filed during his failed attempt to buy the bills back in 2014. When the deal with the Pagulas ultimately went through for $1.4 billion, Trump took to Twitter writing, even though I refuse to pay a ridiculous price for the Buffalo Bills, I would have produced a winner. Now that won't happen, end quote. Now some of us who covered the team back then spoke at length with Cohen during the sales process. Some of Eyewitness News reporter Jeff Rusak takes a look back. Longtime personal lawyer to President Donald Trump, Michael Cohen, answered all sorts of questions in front of Congress Wednesday, some of which included Trump's 2014 interest in purchasing the Buffalo Bills. Cohen submitted three years of Trump's financial statements that show fluctuations in his net worth. It was my experience that Mr. Trump inflated his total assets when it served his purposes, such as trying to be listed amongst the wealthiest people in Forbes and deflated his assets to reduce his real estate taxes. John Waro has covered the bills for the Associated Press for almost 20 years. Cohen worked closely with the Buffalo area media when Trump showed interest in the bills. I believe his first quote was, Donald Trump is the most serious person about buying the bills. Cohen brought up the bills to call the president a, quote, cheat, saying he lied about how much he was worth to get a bank loan. There was always questions about how deep his resources were. Waro says Cohen had a much different tone in 2014 compared to his testimony Wednesday. He was somebody who was always on message. He was always on message when it, when it came to Donald Trump's deep, deep pockets, when it come, came to speaking about Donald Trump's brand. Um, he was a loyal soldier. And while what Cohen said in front of Congress is in question, Waro believes he only told him the truth. Everything that he told me um, about the sale process proved to be correct. In Buffalo, Jeff Rusak, 7 Eyewitness News. Meantime, halfway around the world, President Trump's second summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is now underway. The two men are meeting in Vietnam, where they began informal talks during dinner in Hanoi. So we're going to have a very busy day tomorrow, and a lot of things are going to be solved, I hope, and I, I think it'll lead to wonderful, it'll lead to really a wonderful situation long term. And our relationship is a very special relationship. Well, the president planning to capitalize on that special relationship, promising his North Korean counterpart that if they denuclearize, the economy there could boom. The summit continues tomorrow with extended meetings between the two leaders. Now to a brutal rape in Niagara Falls. Police say the alleged victim escaped through a basement window after she was raped and stabbed. 25-year-old Eduardo Rodriguez is in custody. Investigators say on Saturday he called the woman to his home on 10th Street and raped her in a bedroom. They say when she tried to run away the first time, she was pushed down the stairs, stabbed, and punched in the face. The detectives that executed the search warrant went in the basement, said, you know, let's see what it's like, turn out the lights. And what I've been told was when you turn the lights out, it was pitch black and somehow she was able to orchestrate her escape in pitch black conditions, what the hospital deemed as several severe stab wounds, break through a window and, and crawl out. It's pretty, it's pretty impressive that she was able to do that. The victim is now in stable condition. Rodriguez was arraigned today in Niagara Falls and is being held without bail. Also tonight, an emotional embrace outside St. Louis Catholic Church in Buffalo. I'm going to cry. Then she shows us <laughs> That is the man who first came forward with allegations of sex abuse in the Buffalo Diocese, hugging the whistleblower who exposed secret documents that showed Bishop Richard Malone knew about other abuse cases, but did nothing about them. Well, today, the two met for the first time as Michael Whalen returned to church for the first time in four decades. Here's I-Team Chief Investigator Charlie Specht. A lot has changed. In one short year, Almost everything has changed in the Diocese of Buffalo. Michael Whalen went from a sex abuse victim speaking his truth to a survivor who found his voice. I'm in an okay place. I have my grandkids and my family and going to church for the first time in 40 years. Siobhan O'Connor was right there with him. She went from a humble secretary to a Catholic whistleblower. Two unlikely heroes meeting for the first time today. I'm going to cry. Then she shows us 